Throughout history, many connections have been made between different cultures and religions. One particularly fascinating link is the relationship between Jesus Christ, Christianity, and ancient Egypt. What's happening guys, Leroy Kenton here. You're watching FTD Facts. I got a very surprising one coming up, so let's jump in. We have Number 10, the virgin birth. So this whole concept of the virgin birth is actually something that's not unique to Christianity. It also appears in ancient Egyptian mythology. In one version of the story, the god Horus is born to the goddess Isis through parthenogenesis, meaning that she becomes pregnant without the involvement of a male partner. Similarly, when we take a look inside of Christianity, Jesus is said to have been born to a virgin named Mary. Coming in at the number nine spot, we have the resurrection. The idea of resurrection is another very common thread between ancient Egyptian religion and Christianity. In the Egyptian myth of Osiris, the god is killed by his brother Set, but then brought back to life by his sister wife Isis. In Christianity, Jesus is said to have risen from the dead after his crucifixion. He was buried in a tomb and then on the third day, he rose again. That's just another very fascinating connection there. Let's talk about anointed ones at number eight. Both ancient Egyptian religion and Christianity have figures who are referred to as anointed ones. By the way, that's what the term Christ means, the anointed one. In Egypt, the pharaohs were believed to be anointed by the gods to rule over over the people and when we take a look at the religion of Christianity Jesus is often called the anointed one or the Messiah which means anointed one in Hebrew also Christos or Christ that's where we get that term from also means the same thing anointed there's also another very interesting link with baptism is a very important rite in Christianity and it also has roots in ancient Egypt in Egyptian mythology, the god Horus was baptized in the Nile River by the god Thoth. This ritual was believed to give Horus the power to rule over the living and also the power to rule over the dead. Similarly, Christians believe that baptism washes away the sins and grants new life in Christ. So it symbolizes being born again, dead to living. Number six leads us to the Trinity. So the concept of the Trinity, the idea that there is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's actually a very central Christian doctrine. Now, there are certain Christian groups that do not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, but generally speaking, Christians believe in the concept of Trinity. However, the idea of a Trinity of gods also appears in ancient Egyptian religion. The gods Osiris, Isis, and Horus are sometimes referred to as a trinity in Egyptian texts. From there, we look at number five, miracles. Both ancient Egyptian religion and Christianity have stories of miraculous events. In Egypt, the gods were believed to perform miracles to help their followers. Like for example, the god Thoth was said to have healed a prince's eye by spitting on it. Now, when we look at biblical texts in Christianity, Jesus is said to have performed many miracles, such as healing sick people, feeding multitudes of people, even healing the blind, right? He, Jesus had spit on some clay, according to the Bible, and put it over a blind man's eye, and he was able to see. We also find another interesting link when it comes to sun imagery. The sun played an important role in ancient Egyptian religion, and it also appears in Christian symbolism. In Egypt, the sun was seen as a symbol of life and rebirth, and many of the gods were associated with the sun. Now, when we look at Christianity, the image of the sun is often used to represent Christ's resurrection and victory over death. Next up, at number three, good and evil. These concepts, good and evil, are present in both ancient Egyptian religion and also Christian religion. In Egypt, the god Osiris represents goodness, while his brother Set represents evil. Then, when we take a look at Christianity, God is seen as the embodiment of all that is good, while Satan is the personification of 
evil. So we see those two opposing forces there, good and evil. Eternal life comes up next at number two. This is a very interesting link. The idea of eternal life is definitely central to both ancient Egyptian religion and the religion of Christianity. When we take a look at Egyptian religion, the afterlife was believed to be a continuation of earthly life, actually. And the soul needed to pass certain tests in order to enter into the afterlife. Also, when we look at Christianity, Believers are promised eternal life in heaven if they have faith in Jesus. So it's almost like a continuation of life. Even if you are dead, you can actually be resurrected and continue the life, but just in a new and different way. But either way, definitely afterlife is something that is huge in both religions and it's also a very fascinating link. Ending this episode off at number one, we're going to be taking a look at some general symbolism. Both Egyptian religion and Christianity use symbolism to convey deeper meanings. In Egyptian religion, many of the gods were represented by animals, let's say, or even objects such as the ibis bird representing Thoth, and Thoth was the god of writing and wisdom. And in Christian religion, symbols such as the cross, the dove representing the Holy Spirit, as well as the fish is often used to represent various aspects of the Christian faith. On that note, we conclude this episode looking at 10 surprising connections with Jesus and ancient Egyptian religion. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Yeah, definitely numerous connections there. There's a whole lot more, but I could only fit 10 in this episode. Let me know your thoughts and comments about anything that was mentioned in this episode. And if you did enjoy this one, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. And if this is your first time stumbling across FTD Facts, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. That way you won't miss any of our daily uploads. All right, guys, awesome hanging out with you as usual. I'll catch you in the next episode.